Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Pavin, an Olympian and beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. And I'm Adam, former indoor player, former professional indoor coach, current beach volleyball coach, and most importantly, Sarah Pavin's husband. Oh, he, he called me by my last name today. I'm not just Sarah anymore. I just need to say, you guys, we have created a monster here. Here I am. We recorded an episode earlier today feeling good and Adam is begging for more Haikyuu. So who am I to deny that? We have created a monster, the man loves Haikyuu. We're gonna zoom through this season. Last episode <laughs> created quite the sob fest for me, um, reliving the emotional experience of Asahi over starting to overcome his fear um, of feeling inadequate and calling for the ball. Um, really tying together Suga, Noya, and Asahi's kind of like history and story together. I feel like we've been on the field train so far. The band's getting back together, the school hasn't been very good, but now they've got their old players back, they found a coach, they've got a couple young, I was gonna call them freshmen, but you know, whatever. First, First years. years. So we're, we're ready to go. They've been, we've got some backstories. There's excitement going on with the team. So let's, let's, can, see, let's see some matches. What let's more see how could they you do. ask for, That's really? Right. The Neighborhood Association is helping them out. Takeda's the best. Which one's he? The teacher who doesn't oh, know anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been grinding. So we are feeling good. Pieces are falling into place. The squad is getting its footing. We're feeling awesome. I feel like it's been a little too smooth so far. Like everything has fallen in place for them. So Wow, if this is happens. smooth. Adam's like, oh, Asahi's having an existential crisis. Noya, not gonna come back. Suga doesn't feel good enough. Too smooth. Yeah, but they've got everybody. Now they've got the pieces. They had to work for it, obviously. But now you're... I'm not sure what kind of hardship Adam is expecting here. Jeez. Spoken like a true Canadian. <laughs> all right, all right, let's see. Canadians love an underdog, like, struggle story. I feel like I can say that because I am Canadian. What is the name? So anyways, last episode was a real winner. Adam and I, our relationship has really started to get better after the Oikawa saga of... <laughs> Episode seven. We, we're we're still not back to normal, but we're we're coming out of that. So today we are watching season one, episode ten of High called Yearning. Interesting title. Doesn't give you Interesting much. Interesting title. Doesn't give you leaving much. Leaving it completely up to interpretation. So we are not even going to venture a guess here, and we are going to dive in. So here we go. Episode ten of High is coming right now. Kageyama and Tsukushima. Again. 
厚さ約2センチ同年代の連中と比べても一回り小さなんてこのボールと床の間2センチがエースの命をつなぐんだ全然ジャンプできてないじゃないですか1ヶ月もサボるから、うん、すみません<笑>厳しいな西野や<笑>大佐、うん、でもベテランの町内会組に加えて朝日も復活ってなるといよいよ俺たちが厳しいぞ<笑>何言ってんすか大佐こっちは俺がお願いますよ<笑>何ひなたこぶってんじゃねえよせっかくの俺のかっこいいセリフがグダグダだよバカ野郎いやーすごい西野江君のレシーブもブロックされたボールが拾えるなら怖いものなしですね何言ってんだあんなもん毎回拾えるわけねえだろ100キロかそれ以上のスピードのボールがほんの2、3メートルの至近距離から落ちてくるんだそんなもん全部拾えるわけねただブロックされたらそこでおしまいってわけじゃないと分かってることが大事なんだガンガン拾んで後ろにはちゃんと仲間がいるんだと分かってるかどうかで気持ちは全然違うもんさなるほどナイスーレシーブはレシーブは全体的にまだまだだな、はい、落下地点の見極めが早い迷いのない一歩目でこっちのセッターは確か1年かさあこっから誰ですかトスとスパイクの一瞬の呼吸そりゃたくさんの練習と積み重ねた時間があるからできることあの信頼関係は一朝一夕で築けるもんじゃない一年セッターにあるのが圧倒的才能だとしたらこっちは積み重ねた信頼と安定<笑>今のカラスのもっと早くいいよ先生何回も言いましたよ<笑>はいおーカンボアクシェイにしてもあのチンチクリンがミドルブロッカーとはねそこは確かにすごいけどブロックはどうだおなんか見てるそういえばこの試合日向君は憧れのエースと対決なんですねあ日向君はね小さな巨人と呼ばれてたエースに憧れてこのカラスのに来たらしいんですよへえあいつにかだからエースになるって言っていつも頑張ってるんですよそんな日向君がカラスのの現エースと直接対決ってわけですはあ面白いじゃんか、okay. 社会人対中学生みたいだけどな栄光
I mean, the it's interesting to see the coach kind of starting to assess his team, look at what he has, his comparison between Kagiyama and Suga, and just the disbelief, which I think at least I felt in watching them connect there, uh, as previously discussed. Um, and yeah, they're just kind of like feeling out each other. First time they've really played. I mean, as a group that's coming in, you're starting to see the team and what they what they can accomplish. It'll be interesting, I think, to see. Like right now, you have a group of three in Asahi, Noya, and Suga. I just impressed myself there. I'm shocked. Um, I just passed out. <laughs> and Asahi and Suga seem to have really good chemistry together, right? And then you have Hinata and. Uh, Kageyama who are who have chemistry but it's all dependent on Kageyama right now <laughs> well yeah but I saw he's like comfortable with Suga that's where his confidence is currently the and ace is comfortable with Suga well exactly but but you see this in teams all the time you have some players who like one set or some players mm -hmm. who like other setters so for me the question right now is like how is that all gonna mesh when you have people on the same team and what are those personalities gonna look like? So that's and cool. did you hear last episode when Sugo's like a high set, slightly off the net, just like Asahi likes it? He knows. He knows Asahi's special set. A sweet spot. Um, you know what I love? When they get the triangle teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's what I love. They're all normal and somebody gets extra animated and their teeth become razor sharp. I like that. <laughs> oh gosh, this is not gonna go well. No. Whoa, that sailed. Got him good. <laughs> he always looks at his head. <laughs> いっぱいで苦しそうで。でも小さな巨人は何回でも飛んでた。あの時はよくわかんなかったけど、きっとあれが仲間からの頼もしい。信頼というやつだったんだ。この人なら決めてくれると、チームのみんなが思ってたから、
So, fun story, I don't even think you've heard about this one. I was playing club volleyball back in high school, and I also really liked to snowboard, and we had a fun tournament one day. I think it was on a Sunday. So I went snowboarding on Saturday. I got home. That's not smart. Yeah, I, I'm aware. I got home late on Saturday and then had to get up early on Sunday to drive. That's not what a true athlete does. Correct. <laughs> uh, not, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. I'm not saying it was a good choice. Way to not prioritize your sport. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun tournament exhibition. Anyway, regardless. Okay. We go back. We drive down to the U.S. We're playing an American team. It was in the States, I live, and you I live were just screwing around. I live 40 minutes from Buffalo. Okay. So we go down. We're playing this team. They're quite good, um, and they have one left side who's built like an absolute fridge. He's he's just huge, <laughs> and I'm playing defense in six, and I was pretty tired at that point, and the block didn't close, and I was standing there, and I was just like kind of zoned out, and I took it right in the face. That's what that reminded me of. You deserved it. You're not wrong, but it happens. You decided to go snowboarding and have a life yeah. <laughs> other than prioritize your sport. I would not have been allowed to do that, but we all know. Well, that's why you ended up where you ended up and my I dad, ended up where I ended up. My dad was Ushijima's dad. <laughs> anyway, that's what that reminded me of. It's r I just, for the record, everybody, it is very hard to get hit in the face when hard. you're in middle back because that ball has got a long way to go. He's a big boy. That ball, it's one thing, you know, if you're in Hinata's position there where you're down the line, where you're down the line and the guy hits it down the line. That distance, not, let's talk Pythagorean theorem here. You're just that letting distance, yourself off the hook for being a right side. Wow. That distance, not so long. From where that ball was hit, to middle back is very far to do this. I'm not saying it was a proud moment. I'm just saying it was a moment. Snoozing. Um, so that's all. I'll also say, and they know, as a right side and digging behind a small setter down the line, you don't have much time and there's no real big block there. So much harder than playing defense in the six. Goodbye. to admit this, Adam, but the Kageyama comparison is making a lot more sense the further we go now that I'm thinking about it acutely. I just got done basically saying the exact same thing about, well, why were you focusing on something you weren't prioritizing what you were supposed to be doing? And then Kageyama said it right after. So. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Once again, though, I'm I'm impressed with 
Kageyama's ability to read his teammates. Like, he's not just getting angry at them for not doing them. He's able to look at him and go, you were thinking this, this, and this, which is why this happened, which is you need to be able to do as a setter. You need to be able to understand the mindset of your hitters and what you're doing. Again, the fact maybe, that he did it in front of everybody, like, yeah. Ugh. So maybe, maybe came at him a little hard, you know, and maybe not the environment around everybody, especially after he just got hit in the face, but he's not wrong. He got some air too. Oh yeah, he looked like he was knocked back like 12 feet. He caught some air on that ball. <laughs> but again, this is, Kageyama is, we'll call it a quote unquote pro, right? He's got the mindset of somebody who is gonna play far on in his career if he wants to. And that's what Hinata wants to do too, but he hasn't had an example. He hasn't had somebody to show him. He's been playing rec league and whatever else. Like he's going to need to learn those things and to be focused in matches. Again, maybe not the best way to go about it, but <sighs> message delivered. I can relate. Yeah. And it's, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that you were right in episode one. I never even thought about it. I was just like getting so mad at this version of Kageyama. Like on my first watch through, but now watching it through again, I'm like, hold on a second. That was me. Oh. You say that every time somebody does that. <laughs> I actually like that though. Me too. 100%. I'm about to prove to you how hard being the ace really is. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, I love it. That's the point. Okay, he had me when he was trying to prove his point about what it takes to be an ace, but then when he was, that last statement, he lost me, because it's like he's making it about how good he is as a setter. Like, I understand trying to be like, no, when everybody in the gym knows where the ball is going, like, that's what it means to be an ace, and yeah. like, it's hard. But then being like, you're good because of me, like, I'm sorry, I'm not okay with that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and I originally thought it was like, hey, we're gonna set you up and like teach you how to hit against the block or like take away your strength to work on, you know, moving it around or whatever, but that... Little yeah. cocky. Little arrogant. <laughs> Now I feel bad for him. Oh, 
目なんかないエースみたいな戦い方ができないでも俺がいればお前は最強だ勝負できるエースが打ち抜いた一点もお前がかわして決めた一点も同じ一点だエースって冠がついてなくてもお前は誰よりもたくさんの得点を叩き出してだからこそ敵はお前をマークして他のスパイカーはお前の取りのおかげで自由になるエースもだねえおうおうおうそうだぞお前のおとりがあるのとないのとじゃ俺たちの決定率が全然違うんだぞそれでもお前は今の自分の役割がかっこ悪いと思うのか<笑>なるほど。<笑>中断させてすみませんでした、うん、すみませんでした試合の続きお願いします,しますおっしゃ一気に追い上げるぞ先生あの二人日向君と影山君ですか同じ中学出身かそれとも小学校から一緒とかいやいや彼らはこの前会ったばかりですよ最初は馬が合わずに大変だったみたいに鵜飼君非常だなよっしゃあああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ So I'm just like he, he has it in him. Yeah. Well, and I think I think what I'm picking up from him is that his intentions seem to be good. Like it, it, it and it's not. You know, his statement about you will be great if I'm here. It, it's cocky. But I guess a lack of maturity too. Yeah. But it's also not untrue. The, and that's. That's the thing. It's like Hinata, Hinata wouldn't be able to do what he was doing without a setter who was very good at that. And、mm -hmm. for me, the other thing that I thought of immediately with this was Hinata can't approach being an ace like Asahi. He, if he plays that way, he will not be successful. And I think sometimes when you when you emulate or you admire a certain player or a style、mm -hmm. of player or you want something, And you try and do what that player does, maybe that doesn't fit your skill set.、Yeah. And so, this, the end result of this is, excuse me, Hinata thinking and understanding that his superpower or his ace power is speed and moving around. And, and also for Kage, I'm g o i n g to go, you need to trust me, I will make it, I will make it for you. Yeah. And so I think, I think the end goal of that interaction, and we may have taken two steps forward and one step back at one point, but was, was really important. Yeah. Oh, he's so passionate, Kageyama. Well, Hinata is too, but Kageyama is passionate in the way of a kid who just like wants. He wants to win. Wants to win so bad and just like. Has everything. He's tunnel vision,、yeah. and every interaction he has, everything he says is about being the best and winning. And it's like, 
lost in translation and he's misunderstood sometimes, but I agree that he has good intentions. Well, and I think the other thing to remember is, like, think about when you were a kid, the only thing that mattered was you. And, and you think, it's not until you get older that you start to realize that other people don't think the same as you. Mm -hmm. So for him, somebody telling him he wasn't good at something wouldn't bother him because you're like, I'm just gonna work and get better at it. And when you are that age and you're not realizing that not everybody functions that way, that's where the interactions get messed up or mixed up because you don't process things the same way. You don't experience things the same way. Could I get a translation check on how cruel is that? What the direct translation is in that moment? And if not, what is it? Thank you very much. I just got goosebumps. I just got goosebumps. That probably meant so much to him. Yep. Oh. And the point that Kageyama was trying to make just happened. Yes. Of how important it is to open up the other hitters. Yep. Oh. But you get a one on zero. You gotta score. <laughs> when you have an open net, you better you better score. Okay. I thought I thought he was gonna hit it into the net. Like you just get so wound up that there's okay, nobody there. Like, and... The worst. I know. That's what I thought was going to happen. That was my instinct. いやー、よくわかんないけど、青春だったな。とすを呼んでくれ、エース。とかね。青春いいね。俺がいれば<笑> ちゃんとまとまったらいいとこまで行けんじゃねえか、お前ら。とにかくレシーブだ。それができなきゃ始まんねえ。ストレッチサボんなよ。そんなにレシーブひどかったですかね。ため息が出ることに。いや、それは置いといてだな。自分がプレイヤーとして選ばれる側にいた頃は考えもしなかったが、選ぶ側通のもいろいろ悩むもんだよな。片付け急げよ。
くださりはなんか違うかな頑張りましょうはなんか生意気な感じだ日向<笑>だっけエースってさ大抵ウイングスパイカーのレフトのポジションの選手がそう呼ばれるけど俺とか田中とかはい3枚ブロックをぶち抜けるとか大事なところでトスが集まるとかそれは確かにエースの役目だけどそのスピードとバレた俺のトスがあればどんなブロックとだって勝負できるあんな風にセッターに言わせられるっていうのもとんでもなくすごいことだと思うよあえっ、ー、とだからあのなんだどんな呼び名でもポジションでも敵チームに一番恐れられる選手が一番かっこいいと思うあ,あのミドルがやべえぞ気ぃつけろとか言われてさそしていいんだな負けないからなあっあでも俺はレギュラーに戻してもらえたらの話だけど<笑>朝日はでっかいくせにホント気は小さいなちゃんとお前も復活したなつがうじうじくよくよいじいじしててすみませんでしたそこまで言ってない頼れる西田も戻ってきたしでも教頭を突き飛ばしたりするのは二度となしねあああと名ばかりのエースのヘラチョコウィングスパイカーも戻ってきてたなそういえばじゃあ一発締めてとっとと上がれグースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。グースポンプスアゲン。And what, what I mean by that is,、yes. like, it doesn't sound like Suga is good enough to make Hinata effective. And can Kagiyama, like, set an off high ball? Because he never does that. Like, he's here, it's quick, it's fast. So, it'll be interesting to see how they do that. And then, I know it's going to sound dorky, but I'm really curious to see how they teach them to pass. I, I know it's an anime, but, like,、yeah. they're. Vernacular and how they. I was assuming you're going to make fun of me for that, but they're.、Uh... <laughs> the vernacular. <laughs> yeah. You know, how you, they do that, how they, yeah. <laughs> how they teach it, I, I think that'll be interesting. The gang is back together. There's no better feeling than when it's like the fall, winter time. Practice ends late, you come outside, it's dark. There's just something so comforting about that. And that scene at the end made me think about that.、Um, yes, the, we, it looks like we will have a conundrum. Kageyama knows how to set Hinata very well.、Yeah. Suga knows how to set the ace very well.、Yeah. Um, they both have some, their strengths. Who's the other wing spiker? Tanaka. Yeah, but so you have Tanaka, you have Asahi, Asahi. and Daichi. Daichi is、okay. the opposite. A lot, I mean, it wasn't like a, a sobbing episode, but I definitely got a few gooseys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got some like interpersonal relationship stuff going on, character development. I am say, I am gonna say, I love watching this through a second time, picking up the little pieces that I missed in the first watch through because I was so focused. <laughs>、um, okay, hit us up with your thoughts, specifically the How Cruel translation.、Yeah. Um, but yes, I think Adam keyed in on a piece that is going to have to be addressed soon the Suga Kageyama. Battle for the starting setter spot. So let us know your thoughts. We would be very, very happy if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel, and 
Let's keep this rolling. We're probably going to have to watch another one today because Adam just can't get enough. Could be. Um, Maybe I'll change my t-shirt. If we're wearing the same clothes for episode 11, you know what happened. <laughs> All right, everybody. We love you. We'll see you next time.